Today we are sharing everything that you're going to want to know before you buy a townhouse. We've mentioned townhomes before talking about different types of real estate you can invest in on our channel, but we've never really just dived deep and talked only about townhouses and just like broken it down completely all about townhouses. So I'm really excited. We're going to be speaking from obviously what we know as real estate agents working with buyers and sellers over the years, but also from our own personal experience because we have owned and actually lived in a townhouse for a while. So we're going to be busting some myths about townhome living. And really, this is just something that you're going to want to listen to if you are considering a townhome as a potential piece of real estate to buy, whether it's as an investment or somewhere for you to live. The, the general client that I deal with that like townhouses or condo living, I can, I kind of combine the two, yeah. is low maintenance and usually they cost a percentage, a noticeable amount less than residential living. Um, one yes. thing that's really p appealing to townhouse and condo living is your HOA. Uh, you're buying in with a monthly fee, but your exterior maintenance, your roof, um, your landscaping... If, if you got uh, irrigation going on, all that's taken care of, which is really appealing to a lot of people. Um, and right now I got clients that are 55 plus or they're retired and uh, they're actually going to be moving from out of state and they're looking for a single story townhouse or condo. Okay. So uh, okay. that was the big points, the big bullet points of why they're looking for a uh, condo townhouse rather than a residential home. And, um, mm. it is appealing though, if you really look at it, I mean, yeah. you and I lived in a townhouse. What was, what was your experience living in a townhouse, Mariah? Okay. So uh, yeah, I'll just share a little bit about our experience and what it really was like for us. And maybe even like why we decided to move when we did decide to move from it. So, um, we purchased a townhouse and it was, um, we, we bought our first house. We were young we just got married. And then we sold that to buy a townhouse. And actually one of the reasons was because, I think I was, wait, so when we sold our first house, I was just scrolling. We didn't have it for sale yet. I was just scrolling through the no. MLS. He wasn't even a realtor yet, but I was a real estate agent. I was scrolling through the MLS and the cutest new construction townhomes caught my eye. And I was like, Spencer, we're going to, we need to buy one of these and let's sell our house. And so we actually, funny, we actually ended up not buying the new construction ones. We were pretty set on those. And then, um, I don't know, one day, the one we ended up buying popped up on Zillow. It was a three-story, and it wasn't old. It was, I think, like 2008 built. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it wasn't an old home, but it wasn't new construction. So we didn't, you know, we were really excited about those ones. But the 2008 one popped up, and we hated the listing photos. It was a rental, actually, and the listing photos just made the home look horrible but we decided to go look at it anyway I really don't know why even though we knew like this is not the home for us we just saw that looked decided to go take a look so we went and saw it um right before we went out to dinner with our family and then uh got home from dinner and made an offer because as soon as we walked in we were like this is it it's it, what we really well, what I liked about it was it just for the price you can't get obviously I mean the neighborhood right um in front of it or just really close to these townhomes there's beautiful homes, the similar square footage. What was it? 2,100 square yeah, foot. It was around 2, yeah. So it's, it's a nice neighborhood of newer homes or similar year built. Um, so they're not older homes and, uh, same square footage or similar square footage, well taken care of, but they were all homes and they had yards obviously. And they were so much more expensive. So if you are on a budget and you care, you care more about just having a little bit more square footage and a home that's like nicer and moving ready. It was, I mean, these were luxury townhomes, so it yeah. had beautiful granite and like everything was just really pretty, um, nice bamboo floors. Like, I don't know, t that was just more appealing to us. Tons of storage than having a yard so it always, at the time. It, it always comes back to this though. The, yeah. the big point mm -hmm. when people look at townhouse, townhouses and condos really is the sales price. I mean, that's yes. something that just caught our eye. I mean, yeah. we were living in a residential home and in a sense, some people really did think we were downgrading yeah. um, from, cause they're like, dude, why are you doing this? They, they it, cause they got, 
got reminded of like an apartment living community yeah. and how everything's like shorter, smaller, compact. You got less parking spaces. But for us, what we saw was luxury, square footage, yeah. turnkey. Yeah. And um, we were actually able to make money off of that investment running rental or an Airbnb yes. renting out by a room. So there was an appealing side. And I would say it comes back to that big question. Why are you purchasing or looking to buy a townhouse or a condo? Yeah. The biggie always is going to be price. No matter what. I mean, and, and when we first started looking and wanting uh, to explore options to sell and rebuy a property, mm-hmm. Mariah really wanted something new. She wanted something new er at least. And so we were looking at the brand new construction ones. That was in a great price range, we thought. But then these ones built in 2008, I mean, 10 years earlier, still in great condition. Yeah. It was just so much more appealing and more square footage. And so we looked at it and um, people thought we were crazy, but we went ahead and did it anyways and made a pretty penny after uh, two and a half years of living in it. Yeah. And, and another thing to say, I think another thing when it comes to should you buy a townhouse or a condo, I think another thing to consider is where are you in your life? Because for us at the time, when we bought it, we were, I mean, he was starting joining with me in real estate. And so we were really just at a point where we worked a lot. We, we were either working or we were with friends. We were young. We didn't have a family yet. And so it was actually right now, the home we live in, it has a yard and we love it. We use it. It's, it's a big blessing to us. But at the time it was actually, it would have probably been a burden to have a yard. Cause I don't think we really would have used it much. It was, it was just like the perfect situation for us at the time. And then, um, you know, we lived there for, not, it felt long, longer, but it was a couple years. It was only like two and a half, three <laughs> we years. Never, we never stay in any house for long. So we lived there for a couple yeah, we get bored short years. Pretty easily. Yes. And it kind of got to the point, we actually had our daughter there and it was great having like a newborn there was really great. But then once it got to the point where she was starting to walk, that's where I was kind of like, okay, carrying my groceries up this really long steps while carrying her is kind of getting old. And then also not having, you know, there was a really great park really close that we walked to a lot, but not having a yard once she was old enough to actually want to play outside was kind of where we got to the point where we wanted to sell. But for the time being, it was so nice. If mm-hmm. it was just us two, I would totally live in a townhouse yeah. again. I mean, I use the balcony simple, all the time. Great, easy, convenient, yeah. open. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it was pretty affordable. I mean, mm-hmm. I look at utilities and stuff compared to this property we have now, which is, you know, a few hundred more square feet than where we were. But yeah. um, the, the affordability, I would say, when it comes to utilities, I, I thought it was uh, very economical yeah. and eco-efficient. So... When, when we are talking about townhouses, though, besides our experience, we yeah. want to talk about how you guys, the audience, you viewing this video, is going to be purchasing a townhouse. And, mm. and the reason I think this is an important topic is because it's different. It is a little bit different than buying a residential property. Uh, you're using a different sale agreement, for one. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have to deal with an HOA. We have to understand the HOA because an HOA is simply this, a monthly fee that you pay for that kind of keeps your property and investment on top and not running down, but also um, maintaining bylaws is what they're called. So the builder, the contractor that built the complex and and a community you're looking to purchase in, the townhouse condo community, they had to come up with these bylaws. And that's basically a rule book um, saying, this is our uniform, this is what we look like, and these are our rules. And if you want to live here, you need to obey these rules. Now, a lot of people do have problems with that. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, but... Another majority of the people love that. They yeah. love having an HOA. They love paying a fee that takes care of all their exterior maintenance and yeah. and it's turnkey, like we're saying. Yeah. So if you don't want to deal with yard work, if you don't want to deal with painting your house, if you don't want to deal with replacing your roof, townhouses and uh, condo living is, is a great option and it's an affordable option. And right now, I know you guys are searching for affordable options The only difference is what are you going to do to get there? Mm -hmm. If I was just a single gal who didn't have a husband who is so great at all these things and did just, I didn't want to deal with worrying about the siding and replacing the roof and all of that. Like I would totally just invest in a townhouse and you don't have to deal with that. And that's another thing is the HOA. Um, How much was our HOA? 
Uh, in this unit, we were paying like 185 bucks a month. Yeah. So generally, there is a difference. We're not, we won't get into this because we're not today's today's show is all about townhouses. But there is a difference between townhouses and condos. They get um, mixed up a lot. But townhomes generally have a pretty significantly lower, from what I've seen at least, um, HOA than mm-hmm. condos do. And another thing I've heard from people is, well, they don't want to live in a townhouse because you have to pay that HOA fee every month and it never goes away. But if you think really think about it, the amount that you would have to pay to, you know, when it's time to replace your roof, do the siding, all the, the maintenance, they take care of so much mm-hmm. and it kind of adds up. It's kind of like you're putting into a piggy bank every month that you would use anyway to have to do those things, right. if that makes sense. And here's the deal though, mm-hmm. when it comes to HOAs, some of them are community run, some of them are paid for by you, the owner, and you pay a company to run it for you and manage it. Now, every HOA has quarterly meetings and a board, it's called. It's an HOA board. And all of this stuff I had to learn. I, I didn't know what any of this mentor was. And luckily, I was um, advised and put on our HOA board where we used to live in our townhouse. townhouse. Mm-hmm. So I was educated. But then again, I realized that the luxury isn't all what it seems. And what I mean by that is you have this $185 a month HOA fee, right? And this is supposed to go into a bank account and it's supposed to be in a reserve account for when things go wrong, when replacements are needed, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So it's like a savings account. Well, some HOAs are in some deep trouble. They don't have enough money in their account because maybe inflation, maybe their HOA dues are too low. Maybe they're out of monthly expenses are too high. So there's all these factors and we run into big troubles in real estate sales for that one reason is when an HOA is in a bad position and that's usually money wise and individuals running them independently. Mm. Um, because I mean, here's the deal we're not everybody's an accountant, not everybody's a business owner and not everybody knows contractors. And uh, when works need to be done, it needs to be done. And we can't delay to obey. So that is one thing I came and realized when purchasing and selling a townhome is how important your HOA really is. Because uh, I've dealt with it here locally when HOAs are in a bad situation, meaning you know, $10,000 in the reserves. Mm. There should be like a hundred plus thousand dollars in those reserves. Mm-hmm. And they're almost in, not financeable. Um, oh, and, interesting. Yeah. And then there's um, like uh, bidding costs. So say work needs to be performed in the next two years. Well, in order to do that, somebody has to come out to the property and, and make a bid on it, right? So there's these dues that the HOA is going to make you, the owner, pay uh, so these bids can be performed and then eventually um, done. So those are usually really big expenses and uh, your property taxes. For me, it didn't really vary. I felt like I was paying way too much because think about it. You don't have a backyard usually. You don't use the land as you would be in a residential home. Yet our property taxes were similar or likewise to a residential home. So those are one and a couple things I guess I just mentioned that you guys need to be aware of. And uh, being responsible with when purchasing a townhome. That's definitely something that I think a lot of people just aren't aware of or don't mm-hmm. know of. And, and I mean, this is this is the realtor's job yes. in, in general. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have interest in a townhome. You speak that. We go show it to you. And then it's our job because once we get under contract, it's within that agreement stating we need to know. Um, the condition of the HOA, we need all your documents. We need, um, approval times and, uh, background checks. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's pretty important in a, in these real estate transactions. And and that's our job. We're, Mm -hmm. we're there to help and guide you. Mm -hmm. So some brokers, they've never sold a townhome. That's true. You know, that's true. And they don't know any better. It is a very neat niche thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's very, it's own thing. It's not exactly the same. Like you said, it's a different sale agreement as the residential one. Um, no, that's really good. Let's bust a couple myths about <laughs> townhomes. These are things I hear often, especially just from buying one and living in one myself. <laughs> so the first one is that 
you uh, or like the biggest like con or reason, I guess, objection to why a lot of people maybe aren't open to buying a townhouse would be that you don't want to, you've lived in an apartment before and you don't want to have that experience of being able to hear your neighbors and having your neighbors hear you. And what we learned to be true is that these townhomes, I mean, generally they're made with fire walls, which are extremely great sound barriers. We had a baby living next door, would have never known, never heard the baby. We, I mean, we'd blast our TV music as loud as we want. There was never any issues. So those fire walls, although you do share, um, we only shared one, but depending on if you're an end unit or not, you'll share two walls um, with the other units. They're like row houses in a row. Um, that is a concern I've heard, but usually they are made with the firewalls. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, another myth that I've heard is people being worried about a fire happening and then you being on the top floor. But these townhomes, all the ones that I've seen, at least maybe, you know, somewhere else they don't have these, but in our area, at least the ones that I've seen that are three stories have, um, fire sprinklers Mm -hmm. and they don't go off when you are cooking something and it's smoky that'd be horrible. They only go off based off of heat. And so that's another thing that the, I mean, these are actually, I feel like it's a lot safer to have fire sprinklers and be on a third floor than be in a single story home and not have them. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, Being able to have security and being comfortable Mm -hmm. on a three story townhouse. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these, uh, the, they're commercial grade yeah. um, sprinkler systems, which is pretty amazing. And I want to touch on the point though, because hmm. um, that is a huge myth that what? people brought up time and time o- and time and time over. Was can't you hear your neighbors? The yeah. walls. I mean, isn't that going to be a problem for you? No, it never was. These are firewalls. These are metal walls, guys, that are very heavily insulated. Yeah. And uh, we have never once heard a neighbor, but also all of my sellers. That's the number one thing I always ask. What are these walls made out of? And I've never had issue with a sound barrier. Yeah. And uh, it kind of brings up the point, though. I I said it earlier is Mm. these are eco-efficient properties. I mean, if you're sandwiched between two other homes, you know, there's not much heat escaping those those sidewalls. So, I mean, your utility bills are dramatically lower when it comes to heat and electric um, in in the winter and summer months, which is pretty phenomenal. Mm, that's good. Okay, let me see because we haven't even gotten to our notes yet, that's which fine. is good. Um, okay, so what exactly is a townhouse? It is basically where um, it's a two or three story home that shares one or two walls. So just mm-hmm. to clarify that. Um, you don't have a neighbor on top or on bottom, so you have more privacy than an apartment or even a condo building because those tend to feel more like apartments depending on the style. There's a lot of different styles of condos. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so really, I mean, those are the biggest the biggest points is the HOA. You can get a lot more for your money than a similar size in your built home that's, you know, not a town home. So really, I think it just comes down to where, where are you at in your life and what is important to you in a home? And, you know, is, is that turnkey living appealing to you? Maybe you travel a lot or you're someone who does work a lot and you're just in a season of your life where, um, turnkey sounds convenient. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest Mm -hmm. points with, with townhouses is how turnkey it really was for, for us, but for the individuals wanting to purchase these homes. So, Mm -hmm. uh, travel's a big part of it, but it comes down to lifestyle. Does it work for you? Mm -hmm. And I mean, let us deal with the sale agreements. Well, of course we write offers that, that you want, um, when it comes to what you are willing to pay for the home. But ultimately there are a couple additional things such as, I mean, even inspectors, not everybody's qualified for a town home. Not everybody's mm. qualified to inspect a manufactured home. So let us help you with that process if you don't know any better. And that's our job as a real estate professional. That's what we have all the experiences with yeah. and contracts for. And if we're representing you in a deal, it is a reminder. It's absolutely free to have somebody represent you. The yes. way we are paid is out of the seller. So the home that you're purchasing, the person on the sign, their agent... Um, signed up with a commission involved and that's how we get paid. So that's why you don't want to be working on both sides with that listing agent only because they have best interest for their seller in most cases. So there's sometimes an ethical standard that some have to um, stand up for. 
Yeah. And then another thing to touch on, um, it won't go too in depth on this, but you did mention that we had used our townhome. We lived in it and it was our primary residence, but it was also an investment. <laughs> I mean, basically we, we used it as an investment property and townhomes, especially with the three story layouts can be really excellent, um, excellent ways to either house hack, you know, or use Airbnb, have roommates. And what we, what we did is we had our whole first floor. It was a a bedroom and then a bathroom and also had a separate entrance in the back. And, um, I've seen a lot of other townhomes like this where that's the case Mm -hmm. and it makes an excellent Airbnb. It was always fully booked up and it was a really great way to make extra money and with a very easy, you know, easy way. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing about townhomes. Yes. Okay. So, um, before we wrap up, if you are watching this video and you are thinking about buying or selling real estate, Anywhere outside of the state of Oregon, we would love to chat with you and help get you set up with a solid realtor wherever you are at. And if you are thinking about buying or selling in Oregon, we'd love to work with you. I will put our contact information in the description below. We come on here every single week with new videos. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll see you next week.